and asking if I'm too lazy to clean substrate. First of all, <laughs> Good morning reptilians welcome and welcome back to the channel so as the title of this video says today we're going to be addressing criticisms that i get on my channel these are ones that i've gotten over a big period of time but we're not really looking at negative comments per se just more critical comments which are okay i absolutely love how much you guys care about my animals that you would want to go out of your way and point things out all the names and display pictures of of all these people are going to be removed and that's because I am not making this video to call those people out instead I'm making this video to show that everyone makes mistakes I make mistakes other people make mistakes and it's okay to make mistakes and I just wanted to address all these things because they may be mistakes that you have made or that you've seen other people make because some of these I received on old videos and I have learned from those comments so yeah, just making this a learning opportunity, I guess. Let's go ahead and get into those. The first comment I get kind of a lot and it's, where's the water dish? And usually this is on videos with the leopard geckos and they have water dishes. I just forget to record that I put the water dish in there sometimes or sometimes like in Percy's tank, it is shoved up against a corner. And so they definitely do have water dishes. Leopard geckos need water dishes. Unlike bearded dragons, they will go and readily drank water out of those dishes. So definitely needed water dishes. That's something that I need to work on is making sure that I am showing everything. <laughs> definitely give your leopard geckos water dishes. The next one is also leopard gecko related and it is, I noticed there wasn't calcium on the mealworms. This is something else that is 100% me and my fault. Sometimes when I do videos where I would clean out those tanks or I would just set up a tank, I would put the dish in there and throw some worms in there and just forget to actually put any kind of supplements in there because I'm just trying to film and get it done and put all my equipment away. The calcium and stuff does get added to those dishes, the vitamins or whatever. It does get added to those dishes. I just straight up forget to record that part. It is very important that you are dusting your feeder insects for your leopard gecko with a multivitamin or calcium. Leopard geckos also will drink calcium directly out of calcium dishes so you can do that as well but it's important that they get those things speaking of leopard gecko dishes i did want to give a huge shout out to geckopia this video is not sponsored by them but they did send me a package of one of their triple food water and calcium dishes for a leopard gecko to try out and give my opinion so i thought this was a really good place to do that so let's do that really quick this is super super cute and this is really cute like a little lid i'm assuming if you're carrying it back and forth you can snap that on escape proof bowl calcium dish and a water bowl for your leopard geckos my honest opinion on this bowl is that it is fantastic it saves so much room this is taking up one corner of percy's tank whereas her three bowls that she had before took up the entire front of her tank this is fantastic it takes up so much less room it's so easy to clean and it looks really nice and it's easy to carry from the sink and back if i fill up the water bowl super nice highly recommended and I'm probably going to order a second one for my other leopard gecko love this bowl I just wanted to open that and show this to you guys really quick because I was excited when they sent me a message asking if I wanted to try one out back to the video the next criticism that I get I used to get a lot on my very original videos on old videos and that is I thought kale was bad for bearded dragons it is I think in my very very first video of Zaz I legitimately didn't know that kale was bad for bearded dragons because that is what she was being fed when I got her so I just continued to feed kale and then I found out from you guys if I remember right that kale isn't good for them so it took a while to transition her into other grains because she wouldn't eat any other grains except kale so eventually I got her onto leafy greens that she eats a lot of now but yes because of that criticism on you guys' part, I knew that kale was bad for her and I made that transition even though it did take a little while. The reason that kale is bad for them is that it is a calcium binder, which means that it makes it harder for your bearded dragon to soak up the calcium. Now, I also get criticisms from my bearded dragon feeding guide where I say that kale's bad, where people say kale isn't bad. If we look at kale information that we know from humans, looking at the Academy of New 
nutrition and dietetics. We know that things like spinach and kale have very high level of oxalates and oxalates are actually the things in vegetables that bind calcium. Now, if you were to look at nutrition charts, you would see things like collard greens, mustard greens, turnip greens, all those leafy greens also have very high levels of oxalates. However, they also contain high levels of sulfur and sulfur actually neutralizes those oxalates. That's kind of what I go off of. So I no longer feed my bearded dragon kale. Anytime I do big DIY projects, especially building Zaz's tank, I get comments about the silicones, glues, and paints that I use in those tanks, and basically people wondering if those are toxic. Am I harming my bearded dragon? The answer to that is yes and no. Yes, they very much can be toxic, but they aren't toxic if you use them appropriately. So silicone is actually the thing that is used to hold glass fish tanks together. It is that thick rubbery substance in all the corners that is actually holding the tank together. Obviously that isn't toxic as long as you are using aquarium safe silicone. Glues, some can be toxic. It is very important that you are reading the materials that you're using and making sure that they're not toxic. Paints, again, they can be toxic, but it is very important that you look at your paints and make sure that they have the little non-toxic symbol on the backs of them or wherever showing that they're not gonna be toxic. Shellac is another thing that I use. It's actually made from beetles and it is completely non-toxic when it's dry. It's very important that whatever you are using, you are making sure that it has had ample time to completely dry out. Just make sure that there's no fumes and everything is dry and and that the materials that you are using says non-toxic. Another huge bearded dragon criticism that I get often is the water bowl situation. And this one's funny because I get criticism on this no matter what I do. So if there is a water bowl in my bearded dragon's tank, it is going to raise her humidity and I'm going to give her a respiratory infection. If there is not a water bowl in her tank, I get comments saying that I am depriving her of water and that she's going to dehydrate. Addressing both sides of this, sometimes water bowls in bearded dragon's tanks are okay. However, if you have a water bowl in your bearded dragon's tank, you have to make sure that you have a hygrometer in that tank to measure the humidity because yes, having a water bowl in a bearded dragon's tank can cause the humidity to go up and that causes respiratory infections. But if you're watching and monitoring and making sure that the humidity isn't going up, making sure that that water bowl isn't under the heat light, making sure that the water bowl isn't giant, taking all the necessary precautions, it could be fine. On that same note though, bearded dragons don't need a water bowl. I did ultimately take the water bowl out of Zaz's tank because she just doesn't use it. Bearded dragons can't see standing water, so a lot of them won't drink out of it. And that's okay. Bearded dragons are going to get a lot of their water from the greens that they eat, from taking baths, from the bugs that they eat. That's why it's very important that you are making sure that you are giving them the healthiest of foods and you are gut loading those insects. And if you don't want to put a water bowl in your bearded dragon's tank and you are worried about them not getting the appropriate amount of water, you can always just take a spray bottle and just miss the tops of their salads and that's going to give them more water. You could also mist their noses and they'll drink the water off that. Some of them will as will not drink water that way, but that is an option that you have. There are lots of different options for getting your bearded dragon the ample amount of water. But this is back to leopard gecko video, who's on my leopard gecko body language video, which did so much better than I thought it was gonna do. I'm so glad that you guys enjoyed that. But one of the top comments that I get on this is that yes, leopard geckos bite and it hurts. In that video, I said a couple times that if your leopard gecko bites you, it doesn't really feel like anything. It feels at most like you're rubbing your fingers up against a brick. And and I guess that was a blanket statement that shouldn't have been made because I forget that I have a very high pain tolerance. And so me getting bit by a leopard gecko doesn't hurt, but I forget that that isn't true of everyone. So for some people that hurts. <laughs> so I thought that it was very important that I point that out. It may hurt you if you get bit by your leopard gecko. Your leopard gecko might be one of the ones that bites and doesn't let go. That was just thoughts coming out of my brain. So sorry if you've been bitten by your leopard gecko and it was a lot of pain. I'm so sorry. 
I keep loose bedding in my leopard geckos tank as a dig spot and I've also had her in bioactive setups and so naturally I've gotten comments saying that loose substrate will kill her and that I need to not have it in there. I can see why this comment happens, why people think this, but it isn't necessarily true. Leopard geckos can have loose substrate, you just have to be very picky with which kind of loose substrate you're going to have in that tank. Calcium sand very much will cause impaction and could potentially kill your leopard gecko. However, bioactive substrates won't. They are made to replicate arid environments and the soils in arid environments. And so they're gonna be okay to be in that tank. Calci sand is the big one that you want to stay away from. All loose substrates are not bad. And you shouldn't just blanketly fear all loose substrates because loose substrates in almost all tanks can be a very good thing. On my leopard gecko care guide video, I get a lot of comments about not having up-to-date information. And yes, that is very true. That care guide was posted a few years ago, so it most certainly is not up to date anymore. That's why a few months ago I did an up to date care guide and I need to go back and do up to date care guides on basically all the care guides that I've done to make sure that you guys have the most up to date information because care changes. You can find care guide books on leopard geckos from a few years ago that show that it was okay to keep leopard geckos together on calcium sand. Care gets better and so those lifespans increase and the well being of that animal increases. So make sure that whatever animal you get, you're always staying up to date on information. If you were looking at a video online of a care guide for an animal and you see it was posted five years ago, I would try to stay away from that and look for something that is newer so that way you are the most up-to-date and informed on the care of your animal. The issue of distilled versus purified water. This is another 100% my bad that I always try to correct in editing or in the description or the comments below a video. I just have this issue where instead of saying purified water, I said distilled water. And I've done that I think in two videos now and gone through and made all those corrections. But distilled water is not good to use for your reptiles. And that is because in distilled water, all of the healthy minerals are removed from that water. What I always mean when I say this is purified water. Purified water most of the time still has those minerals. I have since fixed myself and I always make sure I'm saying purified water, not distilled water. For some reason in my brain, those are the same thing and they are most certainly not the same things. One comment that I've seen multiple times is basically asking why I would put tile in a tank and asking if I'm too lazy to clean substrate. First of all, I have multiple tanks with loose substrates, but lots of people use tile for a couple different reasons. Yes, it is easier to clean. It also doesn't come with an impaction risk. It sands down nails. There aren't really any negative benefits to using tile, unless of course you are using tile in a tank that is a burrowing species. Obviously that would be negative. But for things like bearded dragons, leopard geckos, there aren't really any negatives to using them. I would suggest using dig boxes or lay boxes in those tanks if you're using tile. Zaz does not have a lay box because she doesn't have ovaries. <laughs> so she doesn't dig. She doesn't participate in that behavior. One of my leopard geckos does not participate in any kind of digging behavior, but my other one that does gets a digging spot because that's what she likes to do. It's just kind of on an animal to animal basis. I have gotten a comment a few times talking about do not use fake plants in tanks because your animal will try to eat them. I have never known this to be true. I'm not saying that it isn't, but I've never seen it to be true. Zaz has never tried to eat the plants, the fake plants in her tank. Leopard geckos don't eat plants, so they don't try to eat the fake plants. Again, in my experience, if you have fake plants in your animal's tank and you notice that they are trying to eat them, definitely take them out. Do not let your animal eat fake plants. On my very first bearded dragon setup video, I got so many comments being mad at me for having a forest themed tank instead of a desert themed tank. And I'm not sure why people were so upset about that. Like, I don't think Zaz is sitting in her tank saying, oh, I wish I was in a desert. Like, why is this a forest? 
but people got really mad about that to which I have to say design your tanks how you want as long as they are providing everything that your animal needs as long as they have enrichment they have things to do they are able to move around and they are getting a loose substrate if they're a burrowing species they are not getting dangerous materials everything is safe in that tank you can basically design it how they want these animals are not wild caught animals they've never been in the wild they don't know where they come from they don't have the ability to wish that they were in a desert as opposed to the forest it doesn't matter as long as you are giving the best home for your animal that you can you do you and the other biggest criticism that I get it actually is not related in any way to reptile care is my accent and this is just the way my voice sounds so I'm sorry if you don't like that I live in Alabama I'm from the south nothing I can do about it but a lot of you guys seem to really like that so that's super awesome that always makes me really happy because that is something that I've always been self-conscious about I guess so to all the people that always say good things about it thank you so much it makes my day that is it though that is all I have for this video hopefully you learned something or hopefully you have seen mistakes that I have made that I have learned from and yeah as always if you have not already please feel free to follow me on my other socials and like subscribe and hit that bell for notifications every single time i put a new video which is every sunday and some wednesdays huge thank yous and shout outs to jennifer kyslick kyslick for following me on instagram and going through and liking a whole bunch of my stuff and this week's subscriber shout out goes to gaycopia for commenting on last week's video and being super supportive and sending me that triple water dish thank you guys both so much you are the bee's knees Thank you guys so much for watching and I hope you have a fantastic day. Bye. <laughs> Recording, she keeps putting her head under the water <laughs> and she had both of her feet in it. Like, what is this? I noticed there wasn't calcium in your, um, a little box in a box for footage of ah one comment that I got one comment that I see a lot one but but just take a fish feeding break Here go excuse me lemon tree get you there get your sunlight